afternoon, or morning, or evening, wherever you are. In this case, I've been watching and following from the beginning. From the beginning. And I was horrified that she could do, go that far. You know what I mean? I've seen clips of the YouTube channel she ran, and I thought, yeah, she's a bit harsh in her discipline rules, but I never thought for one minute she'd have gone that far. Never. Anyway, yesterday or the other day, all these video clips, all these videos were released, and information was released on this case, on the case of Ruby Frank and Josie Hildebrand. And I watched the court case where, well, I watched both of them, right? But I watched the one where they went back to the given their sentence, right? Now, Ruby still got a lot of work to go. Is is it showing me some remorse, right? Where Jodie, what she said at her court case hearing was without any feeling. So she just said it because she thought she'd be she'd look better upon by saying that. She had no feelings. Where the mother, or I think it's the worst because she's the mother. She had some remorse. She had feelings, right? I think if she gets away of just doing four years all together, uh, I think that's disgusting. It's, a dis it's disgusting towards the children, what she put those two children through. So I think she should do more than four years because at the moment she's, um, she's, been, she's been charged, they've both been charged with one to 15 years each on each count to run consecutive, consecutively that means when you finish one year you do the next one and then you do the next one all right so she's looking at four years minimum joe uh ruby is and joe did but i don't think that's long enough for what they did they're only she's only remorseful now because she's been caught now, if that little boy hadn't escaped and finally got away from that house and got help, I don't think we'd be looking at this case like this. We'd be looking at a murder case. We really would. And you'll hear on videos the police describing what they saw, what they heard, what they smelt. You know what I mean? Now, there is pictures. So I'm putting my little warning sign up. Right, it's up in the corner. I put my little warning. And I think I've got uh the warning up on. No. So I'm gonna just do one that. Okay. Because a lot of this is very triggering. So, when we come to this part, I will warn you again. So, if you need to get up and walk away, please do so. Don't feel that you need to stay. So it is, I just could not believe what I was hearing. You know what I mean? Especially that phone call that that gentleman made. That is just horrendous. 
how is he coping with all this? Is he getting help? Is, some, is his wife getting help with this? Because they were first seeing it, they were supposed to see all this. You know what I mean? They've got to be get, because that would be haunting me, seeing that. Right, first hand. Even the um, paramedics, as I call them, or what are EMS, emergency medical services, over there, even the one woman was wiping her eyes. It's so disturbed, so upsetting. But we're going to look at some of these. Now, I found, I've seen all these videos yesterday on YouTube, and now I can't find them. Because <laughs> the only ones I can find are the ones on uh, Court TV. Which are, which are the same ones that I found yesterday, but for some reason I can't find them. <laughs> so we're going to watch it through Court TV. Right? And uh, so I acknowledge them, Court TV, they do a brilliant job. And they did all the court hearings, everything. So, let's just see. Oh, I'm going to put this up now so that I don't forget it when it comes. These two women, right? These two, vile. Her, she's been doing stuff like this for years. You had her niece talk about her and how she treated her. And yet when she escaped, the police didn't believe her and took her back. Her, right, I'll tell you what I think. I think she went to her for help with her son, right? And that was through the church, the church, right? So, and then she's realised who she was and what a big following she had on her YouTube channel and sort of like enticed her to come over to their own to do that connections which will hopefully bring all her followings over to her but you see it didn't it didn't do that it didn't. right because they was losing followers anyway before she went to connections because of that one video that was released where the son was telling him about was talking about how he's made to sleep on the floor he had no bed he had no bedroom you know what i mean and he slept on a beanbag for how long was it now six to seven months so and that's the harshest but i think the other video I saw was when she got the little son, the younger son. He he was having to go out somewhere and said, oh, before you do that, go and do that, I want you to go and pick your socks up that you just left on the ground out there. Go on. And she follows him down and he's going, where, where? Oh, yeah, I see him. Put him in your pocket. Go drop and do me, give me ten. Make him do push-ups. And if he wasn't doing them right... She was stopping him and making him do it right. Now, come on, you don't, you can discipline your children, but you don't have to discipline them that way. You don't. She threatened the youngest daughter once because the youngest daughter got hold of scissors. Well, I'm sorry, but you shouldn't be having scissors sitting around your head, said, should you? Right? She got hold of scissors and she cut something. And the mother got one of her teddies and said, if you cook anything else in this house, I'll cut your teddy's head off. That is enough to scar a child for life. You know what I mean? And it's the two youngest children that caught the brunt of the punishment, believe it or not. Because once the old slag was 18, He's able to get away from that, and I believe he went, God, 
the factories they normally do some where they go away and for a couple of years to do some oh, what is it some work with uh, in other countries or whatever you know what i mean missionary work so i don't know if he went on in into onto a mission into a missionary work thing when he hit 18. but the daughter she literally brought those kids up she was the one getting those kids up in the morning because the mother the mother wasn't going to do it so the daughter was getting those little ones up in the morning getting them washed getting them dressed getting them fed making sure they've got their packed lunches because the mother done nothing she didn't even do their packed lunches for them now we're talking about uh four and six year olds by now these two younger ones right she wouldn't even do them a packed lunch they had to do it themselves and if they didn't take their packed lunch with them to school they went hungry now from what i understand is if they didn't behave when they was at home they didn't get their evening meal either so they could go all day possibly all day without anything to eat because this mother is too idle too selfish to help her children in the mornings right i used to get my kids up i used to make them their breakfast i used to do them their packed lunches if they had a packed lunch my daughter used to take a packed lunch my son digging he used to buy a lunch but my daughter used to at one point had a packed lunch i used to do her packed lunches for her I see them not they go to school themselves when they're in senior school, secondary school. So they meet up with friends down the, some friends will come to the house first, then they'd all go off together, then meet up with some other friends down the road. And I could watch them going down the road. Right? And then they'd all go and get the bus or whatever they did. Whether they walked to school or caught a bus, I don't know. I really don't know what they did. If there's anything like me, they probably walk. And kept the money that I gave for the bus fares. <laughs> anyway, so saying that, I I think there's a lot of parents who would do that. There are some parents that don't help their children. Even in the UK, there's parents don't get up in the mornings with the children, don't get them dressed, don't feed them, don't do anything for them. So this isn't just. A single case a single incident this is ongoing oh. so this is ongoing all the way around the world which just so happened they got caught and i'm glad they got caught i'm glad they're doing their time but I hope they don't just do one year for each charge. But in this state, it's down to the probation board or someone like that um, to decide how long. And that's after six months. So they've been sentenced, and within six, I mean, by the end of six months after they've been sentenced, the probation board will speak to them and they decide on how long they're going to be doing. Right, not the judge, the judge just sets a limit, right? And another thing is, in that state, unless it's for murder, they cannot do more than 30, is it 30 years? They cannot do more than 30 years, unless it's for murder. So, all the, those four cat charges that pleaded guilty to would add up to 60 years. Right, but they're not ever going to see 60 years. The most they're going to do is 30 for all four cases. Right, because it wasn't a murder case. So the most they're ever going to do for all them four charges each is 30 years altogether. So some people say the mother should get off easier because she was more remorseful and whatever rather than Jodie, she's been doing this for a long time, a long time. So, 
So I don't know. I I think the mother should do at least. Oh, I don't know. Three years for each case, that's three, six, nine, twelve years. But then again, like in the UK, you get sentenced to, like, say you got sentenced to three years, right? As soon as that court, ca you walk out of that court, when you go to your jail or whatever, it's put down to 18, it's literally cut in half to 18 months. And then, depending on how busy the jails are, how good you've been in jail, you could get off after you get out after about six months. But then, then the other twelve months, you have like a tag, an ankle tag on, and you have to report to your probation officer weekly. And you have to do certain things. So, I don't know what it's like in the US for their time. So, she may not, even if she got a year, she won't even do four years. I know that much. I know she won't do the full four years. She probably did about three years, two to three years. And in this one interview we're going to watch with the father, I love her. What's going to happen to my wife? I still love her. Even after he's heard what he's, she's done to her children, to their children, he still loved her. But then, a while later, a few months later, he puts him for divorce. I don't know why he put him for divorce. He wanted his children. And there's no way they were going to hand those children back to him. DCFS was not going to hand those children over to him while he was still married to her. Because that would mean when she comes out of prison, she can come back home. You know what I mean? Where with the children, that's caused, that she caused so much harm to. So he's had to put in for divorce to get his children. Because he wouldn't have got his children otherwise. I just got this. Right, so he wouldn't have got his children, so that's why he put him for divorce. And I think when she comes out, she should be allowed, she should be nowhere near those children. Nowhere near, at all, ever. Perhaps when they reach the age of 18, or 21, then perhaps they could say, I want to see my mum. You know what I mean? Perhaps then, but not while they're still young, not while they're still under the age of 18, should she have any contact with, the, with those children. So, we're going to go here. Yeah. I don't know if you've got to set it up on my screen now. You share it. Right, this is the one that when they've got out to the police station, right? But we've got one for the jailhouse calls. They've all been revealed now. This is the one I love. I love this one. And we're going to just see some of it because it is about 49 minutes, right? But this one I love. No, sorry. I'm not going to show that one first. Yeah, no. Right, let's have a look. Where is he? All right. Hold on. Where is it? <clears throat> right. Is one right? Which we're gonna show. 
And this lad actually went to the other house first, but got no answer. All right, got no answer. Oh God, he's all right. Oh. Right, got no answer from the first house he went to. So he then left that house and went to another. And this is where he's at that second house he went to. Let's watch this. Hi, how are you? Well, what are they? Uh, taking me to the nearest police station. For the first time, we're hearing from Ruby Frankie's son himself, the emaciated 12-year-old boy who broke free from duct tape shackles and ran for help. His escape exposed the shocking abuse at the hands of his mother, Ruby Frankie, Only time for lawyer. and her friend, disgraced psychiatrist Jody Hildebrandt. If you knew all the pieces, I think you'd have a lot of empathy. What's going on? And the details of the boys' abuse proved to be more horrific than we could have ever imagined. Medical got there, they started cutting. Hold on. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. Please, I'll give you a second or so to move away. If you don't want to hear this, please leave me. Turn the volume down. Walk away, whatever. But there's a trigger warning coming up. So I'll give you a minute or so. To do what you have to do. Okay. Well, I'm going to continue, but I'll re I will reinstate again. Trigger warning. Cutting his cutting the stuff off him, and then you can see like the. The dark around his. This is actually at Jody's Hildebrand's house, but uh, he must have been at the other house, the neighbor's house, to know this information. His ankles, and it, it, you could smell it, the, the flesh. By now, you know the story of Ruby Frank, the once famed YouTube mom who turned convicted child abuser. Frankie rose to fame documenting the lives of her children on the YouTube channel Eight Passengers that at one point had more than 2 million followers. Critics pointed out Frankie's alarming parenting tactics far before her arrest. And my kids are literally starving. I hesitate to say this because it's going to sound like I'm like a mean bar. I'm going to let you eat breakfast until you get your chores done. But it was August 30th, 2023, when things really changed for Frankie. Place your hand on your back for me. Perfect. And then... That's when this harrowing 911 call was made. This kid is obviously been... I think he's been... He's been detained. He's been... He's obviously covered in wounds. We've played the call for you dozens of times here on Law and Crime Network, but this is the first time we're actually seeing what led up to it. This week, Washington County, Utah, finally released dozens of documents, photos, audio recordings, and videos, all relating to the Frankie case. And we're getting a firsthand look at what happened. We know that on August 30th of last year, the Frankie's son, who we are identifying as RF, broke free from Jody Hildebrandt's Ivan's Utah home and ran for help. Here's a video of him approaching a neighbor's home and ringing the bell. This is the first house he went to. RF ring the bell this is the second. The front door for someone to answer. Is that the first house he went to? As he stands.
hands there, RF is emaciated with extremely small legs. You can see the duct tape around his ankles. He's wearing a ragged long sleeve shirt that has blood on the arm and socks without shoes. When RF knocks on the door, it's soft, almost as if he's too weak to make a loud bang. After about two minutes waiting at this home, RF leaves and heads to another neighbor's home. The next neighbor RF visits makes the infamous 911 call, and the entire thing is caught. The boy slowly approached the door before pressing the intercom. At first, it seems like no one will answer the door as there's an automated response. Answer the door right now. But if you'd like to leave a message, you can do it now. So RF starts to walk off before we hear what sounds like a door opening. Yes. RF turns around and faces the neighbor, asking for what he calls some favors. Hi, how is this? Wondering if you could do two favors. The man asks the boy what's going on, and he replies, it's personal business. Well, actually, this one's fine. Well, what's going on, son? Have a seat there. It's personal business. The neighbor asks RF how he got over there before the video cuts out. What's your name? How'd you get here? I... I... We now know RF broke free from duct tape shackles after months of abuse. He and his younger sister were found in such poor condition that they needed to be hospitalized after their rescue. Next, we see video of the neighbor making the infamous 911 call that up until now, we only had heard audio for. As you can see, RF is within earshot of the call. Two, 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 one, five, one, two. Okay, seven, seven. I just had a 12 year old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. And he uh, says he just came out from the neighbor's house and he's got tape around his legs. He's hungry and he's thirsty. Need someone immediately. Another video shows the man still on the line with 911. Put duct tape around him. There's sores around him. Yeah, there's sores around him. I think there's a good chance he's been. Uh, he also had oh, and he had around his ankle. As well. I mean, his wrist as well. Oh, okay, this boy had been. Need immediate The 911 report. We now know that as one neighbor was saying all this, the other was comforting RF. Oh, he was such a good kid. Such this kid is obviously been. I think he's been, he's been detained, he's been, he's obviously covered in wounds. In another ring from the same house, we see RF eating for the first time as emergency responders arrive. He's hungry and, uh, and uh, he's having a The neighbors wave for the ambulance to come closer as they tell RF he's going to be checked out. Thank you. 
A separate body camera video shows one of the first responders begin to cry for seeing RF sweet. Soon, RF loaded into the back of an ambulance. Body camera video shows her speak with a boy, saying he needs a few hands. Sergeant told me to just get a few pictures of your face. Huh? Washington County released photos of the boy's wounds and his sisters, but we've decided not to sh show them because they're too gruesome. Additional video of RF being treated has been partially redacted, but you can't hear a first responder. My boy is not in trouble. I hear the ropes on you. Who did them? You're not in trouble with me, okay? We're just trying to figure out what's going on. Our main fault right now is you, okay? Who put the ropes on you? Supposed to help you what? An officer later described RF's wound, saying he could smell the flesh. First of the kid, he was sitting on the chair and the... Um, duct tape and take a warning. And then we pulled his Internet's playing up around his ankles, and it, it you could smell it the, the flesh it's underneath the tape. As soon as they took it off, you can even outside you can smell you can smell the, the flesh, and then um, the transport or put him in the ambulance. I went in there. Um, they started cutting more off of it. You can see the wounds on the back of his ankles, around the front of his ankles, um, and then on his wrists as well. And um, the wounds around his ankles were dark and um, like, I don't know, like wet looking, I guess, from the moisture underneath it. Yeah, he said he said uh, he was tied on the ground with a rope. That's where the wounds came from. Yeah, with ropes on all four of his extremities, and that's where the wounds came from. And then um, they put the put yeah they put cayenne pepper mixed with uh, honey. He said on the wounds and then covered that with the plastic saran wrap and then the duct tape over the wounds yeah cayenne pepper and honey there's a lot said about this after this first come out well about that and uh, it's apparently an old remedy or something right i don't know but one woman said she had the gardener and he cut his finger, like a little cut on his finger. And they've been talking about this incident, this case. And he said, you got any cayenne pepper? Cayenne pepper and honey? He said, I'll mix them all up and put some all on my cups. I'm not joking. The guy said he had to, he couldn't have it on his finger. And this was just a little cut on his finger. He had to go and wash his hand finger and everything to get it out it was burning him now that's sad that when they said about the the smell that's turning into gangrene right that's the infection the gangrene now he's lucky he hasn't lost his limbs 
This little boy is so lucky he hasn't lost any of his limbs. So, we'll carry on. And then that's what we cut off was that. Yeah, they dressed the wounds. Um, some of the wounds when I was in there, um, when they went to go um, kill it, they thought it was some of the dressing. It was actually his skin that was peeling. As RF is being treated, first responders arrive at Hildebrandt's home. I love this bit. Flipping love it. Well, hold on, I'm going to show you another one. Which is better. Right. Which one? We'll explain it after this. You can't just. Uh, Jody, I need you to step uh, out. I have, I have my turn. That's great. Step out of the house. No, I'm not going to step out of the step house. Step out of the house. Step out of the house. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're just going to step out. Is there anybody else home? Wait a minute. How do you come to my house? Right there. I love that piece. Have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant? Have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant? Have a seat right there. I'll explain everything after. Have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant, sir? Control 12 x Can you hold the air? We're searching. The I'm not sure how it works in the US, but in the UK, they've got probable cause of a child being who needs help is being injured or anything in a home. They don't need a warrant. They can go in and find that child. They do need a warrant, however, to uh, search anything else, like when they're looking for the uh, vault. They needed the warrant then, so they could enter that room. Right, and things like that. But for the first responders, they didn't need one because they've, they've been told there was another, there was another child in the house. So they needed to find that child. And they can't wait around waiting for a warrant. You know what I mean? So they have every right to go into a person's home and look for this child. The house? I can tell you what's in the house. Okay. Just have a seat right there for me. Do you have a search warrant? We'll explain it after this. You can't just come into my house without a search warrant. We'll explain everything after this, ma'am. She was. She knew she was in the room because who answered the door to the police with your uh, attorney on the phone? You know what I mean? Okay. Well, that's one of the reasons why we're here. So we'll explain after everything's done after we. Clear the house and make sure everything's fine. In but there. why are you coming into my house without a search warrant? We'll explain it after this. But that doesn't make sense. You come into my house and do what you want, and then you tell me you don't have a no, warrant. No, we'll explain why we did. But don't you have to have a warrant? Not at this moment, we don't. We're here on exigent circumstances, and I'll explain it after this. After my sergeant and the officer are done clearing the house. Is there anybody else in the house? Yes. Two kids? There's a little girl. Just one? She's right over here. Okay. How old is she? She'll be 10 next week. Okay. And she's on this side? Mm -hmm. I have Airbnb guests over there. Probably scared me to death. Okay. You won't have me long after that, would you look? What a shame. And they're on this side of the house then? They're right over there. She's over here. Can you get through the house that way? Yes, they just okay. have to go right there. 
There's no other kids besides her? Yeah. What's her name? Should we be off to where are you at? Right. She's already told them there's a child in the house, right? Now we're gonna watch it, some other video where they found this little girl. Appeared years earlier in Frankie's vlog. When he rings a neighbor's doorbell, he asks, Can you take me to the nearest police station? Right, we'll go past this day. Uh, we'll go past all this. Hold on. We're getting to it now. Right. Are you going to the uni? Hey, you okay? Is this just you in here? I'm Sergeant Tobler. What's your name? I just have one. Where's your sister at? Contact one. You okay? You see, from the appearance of that child, it looked like, to the officer, it looked like a boy. But we think the mother may have cut her hair out as, as a punishment. Because the daughter, little girl had longish hair. Huh? You doing okay? You don't want to talk to me? Yeah, that's okay. Can you come with me, though? Sergeant Tobler would later tell ABC News they initially believed Frankie's daughter was a little boy due to the young girl having a buzz cut at the time. Tobler then tells EF they apprehended Jody Hildebrandt, but the little girl still sits silent, seemingly too afraid to speak. We got Jody out here. You know Jody? She's outside with us. I don't think he should have said that because... Yeah, he's, she's outside with us, but we've got Jody here. Do you know Jody? She's outside with us. Yeah, I know Jody, and I don't want to be anywhere near that woman. It's just going to put, oh my God, you're going to believe her over me, sort of thing. You take your time, but I'm in no hurry. I'm a police officer. Did you know that? I don't mean to hurt you at all. You're What's okay? this over here? Are you scared? Yeah. You're okay. Do you need help? You want to come with me? No. I'm going to go I'm not going to hurt you. Promise. See this right here? It's a badge. It tells me I don't hurt people. I'm just here to make sure you're okay. If you're in no way in any trouble, I'm not here to hurt you. I just want to make sure you're okay. And I get you if you're scared. I would be too. Okay. You want to come with me? Still visibly afraid, the officer then offers reassurance to the young child by sitting down on the floor with her. One zero, one zero, one zero, one zero. It's okay if I just sit here with you. We don't have to say anything if you don't want to. Look how skinny she looks. Her arms. A little more than an hour later, EF is still afraid to leave the closet. 
Sergeant Tobler asks the young girl if she's hungry and would like some food. I'll put the screen okay. You want to have you can eat. There we go. Yep. Yeah. at the small personalized pizza for pour slowly and toward her so she can take a bite. Frankie's daughter reportedly eats the entire personal pizza and half of the large one. More than an hour goes by and EF is still a closet as officials take turns to try to get her up, but she's still not budging. One EMT tries to get her to talk, but she said she's nervous. You don't want to talk? Okay. There's nothing at all you want to talk about? It's okay to talk to me. Are you scared? It's unclear what was said after EF tells the EMT she's nervous. However, 10 minutes later, officials reassure EF she won't be harmed. So can we carry you from there? I promise. Thank you, promise. We helped your brother. And we got him some help, too. And that's what we want to do for you. That's what we want to get you some help, too. We are safe. We will not hurt you, and we won't do anything to hurt you. It's unclear what was said next, but after nearly four hours, EF stands up with the emergency responders and slowly walks out of the closet. EF is later taken to a hospital. Hildebrand and Frankie, she doesn't say a word, seemingly unfazed. <laughs> So I know I introduced myself to you earlier, but my name is Detective Bates, and, and this is Sergeant Tobler. We're just here to talk to you about kind of a few things involving your kids. Um, all right, I'm gonna have you stand up, all right? All right. Thank you. Go ahead and face this officer. Go ahead and place your hands on top of your head. You know, that's your finger, please. Thank you. Just put your hands on top of your head. You're good. Look to your left. Jessica, she's being a big card. 
Seems to get another day. Hope you got Monday meeting. Go ahead, Andrea. So, Homer will call it if you want. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, that was the most satisfying video. One of the most satisfying. But the one that got me was the mother. When she went to the hospital first, she was told by the uh, hospital, uh, you can't see your children. Because she, they've been assessed by the doctors and everything. But please wait there. The police would like to talk to you. With that, she's turned around, walked out of the hospital, got in the car. And then you go to Jody's, where she then respectfully got arrested. Ha! Ha ha ha! Right? Uh, I don't know if she phoned uh, Pam Botcha before she went to the hospital or after. I don't know if she phoned her husband before she went to the hospital or after. Right? And... Uh, so she phoned Pam to ask if she could pick up her two middle daughters, which she did. She take her back to there and said, yeah, well, I can do that. I'll, they can come about and clean the house. Don't they clean the house themselves? Don't they know how to clean houses themselves? I clean my house myself. Okay, it wasn't these big houses like this, but I clean my house myself. I never once asked my kids to clean the house. All I ever asked my kids was keep the bedroom tidy bring any plates and cups down that you may have so that I can wash them up. I wouldn't even ask them to wash up. There wasn't a rotor, oh well, this night you've got to wash up, tomorrow you've got to do this, and so on. No, there was nothing like that. My kids did eventually, as they got older, like into the teens, would say, can I do some ironing, Mum? Yeah, yeah, you can do some ironing, right? Uh, my son, he started to learn to cook from a very young age. I think he was about four, four, five, say five. And we started him up with beans on toast. Right? Something simple. And then it went from beans on toast to doing spaghetti bolognese. 
But my son had this habit of, of we, we prepare it all for him, like all the peppers and mushrooms, whatever, was going into bolognese. We cut all, all that up for him. He put it all in, right? And then go off. And we go, you're not going to watch it. You can give it a stir or something. No, no, it'll be okay. And then when it was time, when we knew, we'd be keeping an eye on it anyway. And then we said, uh, Dinger's ready, do you want to come and serve it up? He wouldn't serve it up. Right. <laughs> so we ended up doing it ourselves. All he ever did was put it in the saucepan <laughs> or the frying pan, whatever instrument we were using. And my daughter, she learned to cook when she was about, oh, 11, 12. Well, she could cook before. Don't get me wrong, she could do simple meals before. But she started to learn to do roast dinners, Sunday roast dinners. And it was because I was working at the hospital at the time. And by the time I got home, I was so tired. My feet were like burning. And by the time I got around to cooking, getting dinner prepared and everything, we were looking at 7, 8 o'clock at night. And normally by then, they've had their baths and up in their bedroom. Whether they went to sleep, I don't know. Possibly not. Right? But... That was the situation. So my daughter said, Mum, can I cook dinner t on Sunday? And I said, yeah. So what I did, I went out and got like a chicken for her, right? And I just told her how long to put it in for, right? I've got her the tea roast potatoes so she won't have to stand there peeling uh, loads of potatoes. I've got the, we always had frozen veggie. So there's always frozen veggie where she just popped them in a the saucepan. And that was it. But she learned to cook. And now, like I said, they're both in relationships. My son's married with two children. My daughter's in a relationship with her partner for seven years, with a little boy. And they're both in a house. They both work. But both responsible adults. So I, I don't... I know people say, oh, our children should have children because when they leave home, they have to do it themselves. Yeah, I understand that. But there's also ways of doing it without making it actual. Oh, God, I've got to do the washing up tonight. Oh, God. You know what I mean? And they automatically came to me and said, I'll wash up tonight, Mum, or I'll cook dinner tonight, or I'll do some arguing, Mum. I'll, do the, I'll clean the living room for you, Mum. Okay. You know what I mean? So that's how it worked with me. And that's how I was brought up. So that's how I brought my kids up. Whether they do the same thing with their own kids, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so this one was very satisfying seeing this video. But, uh, I want to show you Hold on. the actual interview of the father as somewhere here it is right all right this is the body cam first of ruby yeah no go ahead okay is there a person right here i don't know where it's at where are we going to use this okay there is one there. Thank you, sir. I mean, I'll take you.
Thank you. Is there a locker? Or is that the locker? Yeah, turn down that. You good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said something. He was yelling something to him. I have all guys. Alright, well it feels good in here. So hey, Ruby asked this time I'm gonna be taking the back of the piece Okay, so I'm gonna be pop up. See if I can fit through here. You wanna put it on one of our vehicles? Yeah, you wanna. Okay, just place your hand on the back for me. Perfect. And then Right now, I can put a finger in each of these, okay? And I'm just going to double off this so they don't tighten up on you on the way out there. Where's your car? It's out there. Yeah. Bought okay. by the command. Um, you don't have anything on you that I should know about, correct? Any weapons, anything that we're going to find. Before we put you in a police vehicle, we need to search your person to make sure you don't have anything on you. Is there anything you have on you? Okay, I'm gonna search you before we put you in his car. That's just protocol, so I'm just gonna have you step right over here and then just widen your legs, widen your stance. Yep, perfect. Are you wearing bra? Okay, I'm just gonna go like this through and make sure you don't have anything. You said you're not wearing bra? Okay. Is that just like a tank top under here? Okay. Lift up your hair. Okay. All right, you're just gonna walk with Officer Hines. No, go out this way. And then, hey, Hines. You want to go this way or that way? Yeah. Okay. And then, if you want to go down the downstairs yeah. into the interview room downstairs. Sounds good. Are you going down or I'm going down? I appreciate it. I was going to ask you to come through my car off, but I'm leaving now. So we're good. Yeah. It's still on. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, hold on. Well, if you want to ask, uh, I got you. Just so we can tell them who we're taking down there. Ruby, okay. Go this way. My. Uh, he told me, she told me to transfer it down and then she'll be okay, good. Yeah. 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 Appreciate it. Ruby, what's your last name? Just so I can tell them. It's in the walk down where his car is. Okay. He just says, it's just it's fine seeing him in the handcuffs and being put in the police car. I'll be transferring Ruby to number 12. Well, my. I don't think ever it gets put in the face now, so you're welcome. I'll come up and I'll come back and grab it after they get back here. Uh. This is her coming out to yeah, car into the police station. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, brown camera. I thought it was pink. All right. Thanks, sir. Bye.
Okay, come on out, please. We'll go that way. Close that door. What's that? Downstairs in the interview room. So I could have gone that way, but I appreciate you open the door. Look at these stairs right here. This next one right right here. Right here. And we'll go ahead and I can remove those trusts there here. Go to the remove them. This way, yeah. Right now, I was shocked by all these videos that come out of my fire. My God, yes, finally, finally. But I can understand why they wasn't released before. Because it could injure the the uh, prosecution's case against them. So waiting this long is so satisfying to see this. And now uh, oh god. Uh Yeah, here's some of the statements. I'm not going to read the names out. Right. Oh, sorry, sorry. I've just clicked the wrong one. Oh, God's sake. Sorry about that. Right, it says, This is her, hard and angry. The soft crime person in the court courtroom is an act. She's never been soft and apologetic about who she is and what she does. It's true, she never has been. She's annoyed. Imagine how her baby's felt while being abused. Monster. It's not that she remains silent. It's that she did so in such a smug, creepy fashion. It does no favours, no sympathy for her at all. She's just cold, calculated and greedy. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Ruby's heart attitude makes me rethink her heartfelt statement and apology at a start sentencing. It's true, yeah? No toys, no clothes, no shoes, no trace of children in this house. Looks cold and uninviting. This was not a warm family home. This is so sad to see no traces of kids in that environment. Yeah. She can't bear not being in charge of the arrogance of this woman. Yeah. While they're allowing a woman suspected of severe child abuse to wander around the house and talk on the phone. Well, she didn't actually speak on the phone, she's just turning off her, an alarm. Damn, she took the right, the right to remain silent, seriously. <laughs> she did there. Love how when she sat down at the station, she immediately took a defensive position, arms and legs crossed, protecting herself, Always self-preservation, typical narcissist. Yes. Yeah. Uh, man, she's the most mentally, emotionally, and spiritually constipated person I have ever seen. Right? 
Next one. Listening to the sound of them walking down the driveway. Imagine those kids barefoot out there. If she reacted. Exactly. It would have been burning their feet. I remember once I walked into my son's. It was a summer day. Right? Summer day. And I had some, like, sandals on. Two-piece sandals. And I'm one for walking barefoot outside if it's a nice day. Well, I took my sandals off because it's comfy to not wear my sandals. So I felt. I'm not joking. Within two seconds, I've been putting my feet on that ground. And this is only in the UK, Scotland. Two to three seconds, I was like, oh no, oh no, this is burning my feet. And I had to put my sandals back on. So imagine what it's like out there. This just makes me think that all the regrets she mentioned during the sentencing are lies. I feel like she's a real Ruby Frank. Yeah. Making sure her handcuffs weren't too tight. Letting her wear shoes. Giving her water. Slash snacks. Knowing what she did to those keys. Very professional officers. They did not want to mess this up. No, they didn't. Next one. This is cold. Unyielding face. Her poor children saw every day. Yep. Yeah. Next one. Of course she's angry. She used to feel like she's perfect and always in control. Hmm. This is why I don't buy her crocodile tears, tears in front of the judge. I know. You don't have to explain how her handcuffs work to her because she already knows from using them on her children. <laughs> yeah. She wants to speak with the manager now. <laughs> The video goes to prove that her apologies and thank yous in court was all fake. This reaction is her true self. Yeah. This is the real Ruby, not the one thanks to everyone at sentencing. Exactly. Yes, how entirely annoying it must be to get arrested for having your kids tortured. But she's really sorry now. Yeah, not. <laughs> she is scary. I don't believe one word. She said that her sentencing crocodile tears. Yeah. But no, I wouldn't say crocodile tears because crocodile tears is when they, they make out the crying and they're not crying. You know what I mean? The attitude of someone who thinks they did no wrong but knows that they did everything that is claimed. Well, this is what I can't believe. We were listening to some of the phone calls in jailhouse phone calls. And there's one where I believe she's talking to her husband. And he's saying that they've been the children have been kept in hospital for like three days or something. She, I don't see why. I don't understand. That's just ridiculous sort of thing. I think what? What? Oh god. Uh this woman is a I mean, She needs to be in prison for uh, for prison forever, or she will come after kids. And the judge cut this woman some slack. To me, she's simply a monster. Nothing, nothing more, nothing less. She thinks she's invincible. She may, she's mad. She got caught and probably fraud every day from abusing her kids. Exactly. That's what I said. What would have happened? She's only remorseful now because. She, She's been caught. But that lad hadn't managed to get away from that house and get help. From what that police officer was saying, had with the smell and everything, that was uh, gangrene. Gangrene of, of the flesh gives off a horrible, horrible smell. And he's lucky to not have lost any limbs. I can't imagine the, the feeling she may, be go, may have been giving off, but just by staring and blinking like that. She's the ultimate coward. <laughs> no picture or decor in either woman's home. Exactly. There's nothing. There's no colour in that home. It's just blank. <laughs> One pop. We also have snacks. If you need anything to eat, damn. <laughs> she 
She's said in court she fought the police with bad people, so she's holding on to that, I guess. Strange woman. She's so baffled as to why she's been treated like she's treated her own kids. Enjoy prison, Jody. I'll ask Jody. Bye. The parole board should look at this video when deciding on whether or not she should be released. This woman does not care about anyone but herself. Self-preservation, no empathy, no emotion, pure narcissism. It's crazy to me how they treat high, higher profile criminals more gently compared to the average when they usually and often cause more significant damage. True. Right. She probably treats the Starbucks staff, staff the same way. If only if one grain of the chocolate dusting on the top of her vegan latte is out of place. <laughs> Scary and creepy. Those poor children. Imagine having that for a mother. Gross. The patience of these officers, I could never, I'm, I'm the same. The police and the police officers have got, have got so much patience with these women. Yeah. Well, what makes this even worse is that she definitely was this way towards her kids if they disappointed her. Growing up with a parent who treated you like an enemy whenever you don't please them will mess any child up. Those kids must felt must have felt so alone. Yeah. I always say you say to my kids, if they like when I was doing an exam or a little test that day, just do your best. That's all you can do. If you don't know the answer to something then it just shows that the teacher hasn't prepared you right. She hasn't, you know what I mean? She hasn't gone over that subject enough for you to take it in and to learn. So, why guilty or not guilty? It's always smart to wait for a lawyer. I have no sympathy for her, but I can't knock, knock her for that. You know what I mean? So, so many. This is one. How is it possible that the father will raise those children is equally culpable? I'm sorry, yeah. He hadn't seen those children in 13 months. Why? Because he believed his wife, he trusted his wife. Uh, no. Right? And all this is going, being, going through the church as well. Don't forget, it all went through the church. The church was referring clients to Jody. Hi. That's how Jody met Ruby through the church because Ruby wanted help with her son. So they referred her to Jody, right? And that's when they sent him on that wilderness camp. After reading Ruby's journal and knowing all of the horrific things she did to her children, her family sickens me. But I have a feeling that in that family it's always been all about Ruby all the time. And shame on the DA for saying it'd be okay with four years for her after what I just read. 30 years isn't long enough, isn't enough time. I agree she's worse than Jodie. She's a mum who should be protecting her kids, not torturing and starving them. Exactly. She she could have said, no, Jodie, this isn't happening. I'm not having this happen to my kids. Yes, they need to have respect and you know, discipline and whatever, but we're not, going there. we're not going down that road. We're not. And if that's what you want to do, then I'm taking my, myself and my children out of this house and back home. Bye. Yeah, I find it humorous that Ruby wouldn't talk to the officers but put her and her children's entire lives on the YouTube. What a joke. However, she's really smart to just say, lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. Yeah, 
Now these videos are coming out about them. What we see in the course, right, is showing us exactly what they were like. And to be honest with you, I don't think Jodie's changed that much, not even in her course. What you saw in court is what you're going to get outside. She's arrogant, Jodie is. It's like, I can't do no wrong, sort of thing. Like when the police come knocking on her door, I've got my uh, attorney on the phone, that's good, please step out the house. And I loved it when they literally got her and pulled her out the house. They've got every right to do that if they know there's a child in danger. And there was. So, let's have a look. I'm going to find the interview with the father. Right, let's have a look for the interview with the father a bit. It's up here somewhere. I know it is. Right, where's that interview with the father? Oh, oh. Yeah. Right. Well, this is the interview with the father. And to be honest with you, come on. I'm a bit annoyed with it. So, you know, I'm gonna before we start, we're just going to kind of ask you a few questions about your involvement, okay? So, first you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you in the court of law, okay? You have the right to an attorney or to have him or her present while questioning. If you cannot afford to hire one, one will be afford or, um, hired to represent you. If you decide to answer questions, you can stop at any time. Okay. Do you understand your rights? Uh, I do. Okay. Do you wish to speak to me now? Uh, well, I want to pick up my kids. How about this? We're going to ask you some questions, and if you don't want to answer them, you just say, hey, man, I'm not going to answer that. Sure. And so just, just say, hey, I'm not going to talk. That's not beneficial to you, and then we're done. There's no way I want to learn. Sure. Now, he won't tell him who right? told yes. him to okay. go to the police. We know it was his wife. Okay. So, just for starters, what was your full name? Kevin William Frankie. How is the letter? K E V I N W I L L I A M F R A N K E. And what's your date birth? What's a good address for you? Uh, my, well, I'm not comfortable giving my address right now. Okay. But you do live in Springville? I do. How long have you lived in Springville for? Um, I moved there in 2007, so okay. it was 17 years. years. And how many kids do you have, Kevin? I have six kids. And what are the names? Some of them are teenagers, two adults. So are they all living with you or? No, I haven't seen them for over a year. Any of them? No, none of them. For a year? Over a year. Okay. I've been in a separation. From who? From my wife and family. What's your wife's name? Ruby. Ruby. When was the last time you saw Ruby? The last time I saw her was um, the 18th 
of, of this month, we met to, she requested me to sign over vehicles or the titles to the vehicles, the vehicle that she drives that were all in my name. When's the last time you physically saw over a solar Um The day that I moved out, July 24th, 2022. 24th of 2022? Or July 25th, July 25th. So it's my understanding that, that at least home here in, in Kayenta and Ivins, have you been to that home? No. You went to that home? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know what's anything that's been going on. Like, this is good, man. Like, I would love to be able to help you out with this. And like, I've seen a lot of you in the channel because I'm unaware of your involvement in, in what's really going on. So for you to say that you're unaware of the status of your kids kind of makes, I know that sounds kind of crummy to you, but it sounds kind of good to me. Like, who lives in that home with your... Is it ex-wife? Is it currently a separated wife? Like, who lives in that home with your children? To be honest, I don't know. I, I know that she's there with um, four of the children, and our two older children have moved out. Yeah, I'm sorry, but before he moved out, right, Jody was living there. So he knew exactly who was living in that house. Whether she was still living there when, when this happened, I doubt it because I was at her house. So, but there's some weird, com uh, it comes back later on after this interview, there's another interview with the police and it's just a recording. And he's going on as things were happening in Jody's house, like clouds being thrown. And there was no one there, the plates were being thrown across the room. So they decided to ask uh, Jody to come in and live with them. So, um, so that was before he moved out, because it was she moved in with them. She turned and turned and said, I think you need to be in separate rooms. So, um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm again. so they was living in, they was living in the same house and they couldn't, like Jodie couldn't, uh, Ruby and her husband couldn't even talk while they was in their home, together, without Jody being there. Now, he's a man, come on. Pull your big boy pants up and stand up to a woman. You don't have to physically stand up to a woman, but you can stand up and say, excuse me, this is my home. I'm just going to sleep in the same bed as my wife. And if you don't like it because you're just a visitor, there's a door, walk through it. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense how we could go, oh, okay, then I'll go sleep in another room. Okay, then if you think it's best, we separate. No. 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 You don't do that. If you love your wife, you stand up to the other woman. They're, they're not at your home in Springville? Uh, and I'm not trying to trip you up. I can see you're hesitant to talk to me. I understand that. Well, where where I live? No, yeah. I haven't seen them for over a year. Okay. That's tough. I can only imagine how that feels when I get to this. And not seeing it for that long, that, that would tear a little piece of my heart out. The age to drive. Does she drive? I don't know. Okay. Like I said, I don't, I don't, nothing is going on so, in their lives or anything going on. 
How did you find out that you needed to come here to 55 North Main Street? I received a message that I needed to come pick up my kids from the police department in Hyde. Yeah, that was a message from your wife. And who was that message from? I would like her friend to say it right now. It would just help us a lot. I'll try to figure out who reached out to you because it makes sense that that would happen. I'm just not aware of anyone who did that from our department. Right. And, and I'm not comfortable saying right now who reached out to me. Okay. So you haven't seen any of your kids in over a year, you said? That's correct. And then both the last time you saw her? How old is she now? 15. She's 16. Okay. And then when all the kids left, Ruby took all of them? Oh, um, yeah. She stayed in the house and then moved up. And did you ever try to reach out to the kids, drop by the home, or was there? I honored the separation boundary that we agreed to. So, what there was no your separation boundary? Excuse me. Did you have a no contact order in place? Order? No. This was between my wife and me. So what did Ruby ask of you when you separated? What did she ask of you? Did she ask you not to contact the kids? Ruby invited me to leave the home mm -hmm. while I um, thought about the, the choices that I've made in my life and the way that I've treated her. Okay. Yeah. So I left. And how long had you and Ruby been married before? We were married in 2000. So about 22 years? Uh, when we separated, we were going on 22 years. Yes. Okay. And during your marriage, how was, how was disciplining your kids? How would you discipline your kids? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay, that's fine. No. Have, have you been since separated or since they lived here in the city of Ivins? Um, have you communicated with your wife regarding like discipline with your kids or their care or their physical well-being? No. So is she doing this on her own, just telling you how your kids are? She's not telling me anything about it. Who's this? Who's this uh, female Jody that your wife was? Do you, do you know a female named Jody? She is a, a therapist and a life coach, I know, and she's. Do you respect her? Uh, do I respect her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she's a very honest, truthful person. Yes. Okay. You place value on Jody. I don't know what that means. But do you, do you, do you value what she says and, and how she treats his, your wife a client of hers? Is your wife a partner of hers? Is your wife a roommate with her? If your kids are living in her house is what I'm trying to say. I'm not aware of that, but I know that they've been in business for the last year filming. Who's they? Ruby and Jody, they Ruby film they film podcasts and so every week a podcast goes up and I listen to it. <coughs> What's the name of it? Uh, connections with an X. Like C O N C O N N E X I O O N S. Yeah. And now you support them in that role in doing that and having do I support them in the business? Yeah, like do you, do you support them and think that what they're doing is a good thing, or? Yeah, I support their business efforts. I think it's a good thing. Are you involved with their business efforts, or? No. So just Ruby and Jody. Okay. In the business. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And were you involved in the eight passengers account? Now he said he's never been to Jody's house, right? Pardon, I'm going to Right, but we know there's a picture of him with Evers at Jody's house. Right? So it doesn't make sense when he says that because we know there's a picture of him. 
with the connections t-shirt on top on with your family um yes i was in the videos and that's what you need I briefly learned about this two hours ago. <laughs> so, did Ruby more so do the videos for the family? Mm -hmm. And how long did you guys do that for? Uh, she started the channel in 2015. And as far as, as I'm aware, from the time I left, the last video she uploaded was towards the end of 2021. Okay. And I, but I, again, I'm not aware of anything she's done since our separation. I don't visit the passengers anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> chapter of your life that's gone? It, it, it's a past chapter, yeah. So how do you and Ruby communicate? Just through text, phone call? Through text, and if there's anything considered an emergency, we agree that we communicate through a phone call. Okay. And do you know her phone number off the top of your head? Off uh, the top of my head? Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. No worries. So, how often would you guys communicate while she was down here? Well, I don't know how often or long she was down here. We've communicated. maybe four times in 2023 since January. So are you aware of how she disciplines the kids or how she handles no. the kids with behavioral issues or anything like that? No. So you're, you're unaware of how she does that? Yes. Okay. Are you aware of the physical condition of your children? No. No, I'm, I've chosen to trust my wife with the children. Big mistake. Is that you allow her to physically provide for the needs of the child? Yeah. You're just removed from that? I mean, you pay support? I know this is personal questions, but. No, yes, my job is to financially provide for I'm just trying to figure out like, how, how much of a role do you play in the caretaking of specifically, is it, of, of those two kids? I I pay the bills. Okay. With my, my job, I provide the money, goes into your shared bank account, and that's why I'm only involved. Okay. Um, like there's a whole bunch of things that I want to talk to you about, but I, I still can't get over the fact that someone notified you to come here to pick up your kids. My guess is, was that, was that uh, Jody? No, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay. All, all I'll say is well, you, someone you said you trusted her. her. You said that you think that she's not as, I asked you if you place value on her, but you, you obviously. She is an honest, I know her to be an honest and a trustworthy individual. And so, yeah, I trust her. And, um, uh, I received a communication that and so I left immediately from my job and drove down here. That's all I know. I've come to pick up my kids and to take them home. We're well, not getting them. Yeah, you get your custodial paperwork that says that you're like a there's there's no custodial paperwork denying you of rights, correct? Uh, there's no custodial paperwork at all. Period. So, so the kids are yours. They are mine. Okay. okay. Yes. We, this was not just a verbal agreement between my wife and I. When we said mm -hmm. last year. Well, what questions do you have? Oh, well, I want to know what's going on and why I was asked to come down and pick well, and then we a lot of that kind of hinges on who asks you because if we had been the one, like, I'm, I'm not going to say you fit, but I'm, I'm confident a cop didn't call you because we wouldn't have wanted you down here at this point in our investigation. So, having said that, it's time we, we'd be honest with you, right? Sure. 
No, and, and I didn't lie. You're so a, someone contacted me, but I don't want to say what I don't want. From your office. But okay. Uh, I don't recall saying something from my office. Our office. You know, someone, yeah, so we don't know who called you. So right. if we knew who called you, then we could help you. It would make more sense. But. Well, I don't know the legal ramifications of implicating individuals who contact me. So without a lawyer here, I don't want to answer that question. That's okay. I'm but sure. you're, you want to know specifics of the case, which we can't share right now because it's under investigation. So. I see. Yeah. So we would like to ask questions about where you found out, but we'll still want to share that information. But I am curious, when you guys had the previous Eight Passengers YouTube channel, you guys got a lot of heat for neglect and child abuse. A lot of people commented those things on there. Why were they commenting those things? That's a good question. Um, we, uh, we had a son who was acting out in very selfish behavior. Just chat or yeah, just just... No, he's acting out like any teenager. Any teenager. Right? And because it wasn't fitting to your way, because it wasn't how you, what you thought was right, you think he's just saying, look, you can't do that. You've got to stop doing this. You've got to start thinking now. You're getting older. You're going to be an adult soon, class as an adult soon, you'll be going off on your own, you've got to start changing your way, start thinking differently. You know what I mean? But they don't. But I'm not going to, I'm going to skip that bit because... We lost 90% of our income, so we said that business was thriving. Uh, in my perspective, no. Okay. I don't think it ever was. After was, that. was that part of your guys' reason for separation after you guys ended eight passengers? Uh, was that part of the reason? Mm -hmm. um, I, the, the reasons are because of, of ways that I treated my wife. And um, and some um, of my own addictions that I was working through and seeking help on with um, with uh, pornography. Thank you for sharing that. And I, yeah, I've made some wonderful progress. Like, is that something you came to the realization that you needed help and weren't doing things right? Or is that something that, like, Jody helped you guys recognize that maybe Ruby needed more? I'm trying to understand her involvement in your guys' life. In Jody's eyes, right? In Jody's eyes, every man is just sees a woman as a sex object. You know what I mean? So, yes, you've been watching porn. That's disgusting. You shouldn't be near your wife. You know what I mean? I remember once there was talking, there was another guy who him and his wife were seeing Jodie. Now, years before this like this guy, when he was only a boy, was abused on a boy scout on a scout camp, right? And they've been to court years later and got all sorted, right? He then got married and no certain problems in the marriage. Don't know what the problems were. So the church uh, kind of said, well, we'll give you these details and gave them the details of Jody. So there's going to these meetings, right? And then after the first meeting, the second meeting, they put into groups. The wives in one group, men in the other, right? And this group he was in were all guys who had been messing with children, right? Had thoughts about young children and all this stuff. And he come out of that and he said, I can't be in that room. 
I can't be in that group. So he wouldn't go, but Jody was still wanting him to pay his payments each week and his wife's each week. You know what I mean? And he wouldn't pay it and she didn't like it. So, but I'm going to skip a bit more because I don't know if we've gone past. It might be different on that. Um, we're going to let sit here for a second, okay? We're going to go out and talk. Right. We'll go back just a little bit because I didn't need A 12 to 13 year old boy was knocking on doors in the neighborhood asking for food and water. That he was severely emaciated. That he had. What is emaciated? Skinny, scrawny. Uh, malnutrition, not enough food, not enough water to sustain life. I'm sorry, but I'm not a, a professor or a teacher in a university. He was. And I know what emaciated meant. So he had, I'm sorry, what? He had duct tape on his extremities, on his hands, on his ankles, and those were covering rope burns that were used to tie him down. Take a second and think about what I just said. That's the condition of your son. Given that information, your son was taken to the hospital. A warrant has been applied and granted by the Department of Child and Family Services to remove from your wife's care. So no one right now is going to have access to these two children based on their physical condition. Do you understand that? I understand. Do you, would you condone that behavior? Would I condone that behavior? Um, That's my job. My job is to find out your knowledge of the treatment of these, these Based on precious children. No. Again, I don't know the details or I don't know what's going on, but as you described that, that sounds horrible, horrible, disgusting. No human being should be treated like that. I, yeah, okay. That's my thoughts. But again, we might be different on that. Um, we're going like, to sit here for a second, okay? We're going to go out and talk. Um, now you watch when they come back, right? They go out the room for a bit, so and you see him sitting there sometimes crying, hands, heading, hands, and all that. Well, What's going to happen to my wife? I love my wife. See, what's going to happen to my wife? I love my wife. Excuse me? Shouldn't your concern be about your children? Not your flipping wife? It's tortured your children. I don't know. I'm being honest with you. I don't know. Haven't had any of you. I don't know how charges against my wife. Possible. Oh, yeah. Charges. There were six charges, but they dropped it down to four. I think given the circumstances, that's highly appropriate. But again, I don't know your wife. I was hoping to gain some insight from you, but I don't necessarily know that that's something you wanted to. I trust her. A road you wanted to travel down with me, so. He trusts her. He still trusts her. And this interview, I trust her. Hmm. Without legal representation. Yeah, all right, I get it. 
but I love my wife and I trust my wife. And so, I mean, this feels like getting run over by a steam truck while you're sharing with me today. Yeah. You know, I can tell you're caught off guard. I thought I was just coming here to pick up my kids. And for what, I don't know what or why, but. And I was fine, I'm taking it back with me. And just. I mean, I'd love to have a candid conversation with you. I just don't know how it's going to be received by you. I don't know you, but I can tell you my perception of how this happened. Uh, well, I'm what interested you that in facts. Look, I'm interested in facts, but mm -hmm. again, at the same time, I'm. Fact. One, you left the family home because your wife said to. Two, fact two, you had no contact with any of your children at all. Not a phone call, not a letter, not an email, nothing. Fact three, your daughter, your eldest daughter, tried to get in touch with you about the younger children, emailing you. But you blocked her. You blocked all the phone numbers. So they couldn't phone you. Fact. Your wife then started abusing the two little children who was at Jody Hildebrand's house. Right? Whether the two older children knew about this, we don't know. Right? Don't need the mother just think, oh, I like to stay with Jody. You know what I mean? Simple. And fact, your wife horribly, horribly abused, physically abused your two younger children to the point where if that boy hadn't got out when he had, he would have died. That's how bad it was. Just by the officer saying the smell of the skin, that's bad. That is bad. And you sit there and say, I love my wife. I trust my wife. So you agree with everything she's done then? I'm, I'm interested in all the facts. But you understand our facts. Our facts are that you have a child. That is emaciated malnutrition and has, and has marks. I, I didn't spend any time with her. Sergeant Tobler did. Did any of you spend time with her? But mm -hmm. didn't spend time I, with I her. have not. She went to, she was requested to go to the hospital along with Russell based on their condition. I don't know what to do. Like, I want this. You realize that I have a picture of my family. Right? Now, if I'd been the husband and the police had just told me my <coughs> two youngest children were emaciated, had sores on them so bad that it smelled, it was gangrene, it was infected. Right? And all that, I'd be going, yeah, right. Throw the book at that bitch. Throw it at her. You know what I mean? I'm on a wall, and I look at it every day. And I work. I work every day. So I can back to my family and save my family and everything you're sharing to me just sounds like a made-up story like i i oh it's not made up mate not made up i have no idea what you're talking about like it's just it sounds like a horror movie It was for your two youngest children. It was hell on earth.
And I get you're all you're all doing your jobs. I get it. I understand. And this is this is my life. I just want my kids. Right now, you've all seen that, so we're now going to go listen to some Sierra House phone calls. Right, and now I'm here somewhere when I can find it. I might have to go back. Right, right let's have a look. Yeah. I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. And he uh, said he had just came from a neighbor's house. And you know there's been problems with this neighbor's house. Does he know his mom? Look at his poor leg name. Look at him. What's your mom's name? It reminds me of one of those from the uh, concentration camp. I have a really hard time understanding that children can be full of evil. I know this sounds crazy, and I still can't put my finger on why it feels this way. But it feels like I was being set up to end up here. I, I know that sounds bizarro. I mean, I shouldn't be here. I haven't done anything wrong. What? What? We're now getting a look inside the minds of to fame as the star of the Eight Passengers YouTube channel that chronicled her life along with her husband, Kevin, and their six children. At one point, the channel had more than 2 million subscribers, but has been defunct since before her arrest. Since Frankie was taken into custody, we've played you pieces of the 911 call reporting her son's abuse, but this is the first time we're hearing it in full. 911, the address of your emergency. 1961 North Yuan Drive in Ivins. He says he just left through the porch at the neighbor's house. Um, her name is Jody Hildebrand, and she lives two doors up the street. Yeah, out here in Cayenne, the houses are far apart, so he walked just under the block to get to our house. He, he rang my doorbell and asked me to call the police. But he's very thirsty and... Uh, need an ambulance? I don't think he needs an ambulance. I'll let the cops decide that, but... His ankles are taped up, and he won't tell us why. Okay. But he has duct tape around each ankle. Yeah, there's sores around him. I think the a good chance he's been. Uh... He also has... Oh, and he has them around his ankles. I mean, his wrists as well. Okay, this boy has been. He needs. <laughs> covered in wounds. Dispatch asks the neighbor about the boy's mother, which is when we hear the name Ruby Frankie for the first time. You know, your mommy, I, I really thought you did. Yeah, I'm sure that that doesn't matter, son. Do you know who your mom and dad are? Well, actually, I don't know where my mom is, but I do know where my dad is. He's not anywhere here. No, no, no. Nowhere. Okay. No, he doesn't seem to. He says he knows where his mom is, but uh, he doesn't um, know where his dad is. That's correct. Is his mom home? He just. He just says he doesn't live around here. Does he know his mom's name? What's your mom's name? Ruby Frankie. Ruby Frankie is his mom's name. The neighbor is then asked whether there are other children in need. Um, can you ask him if any other children were in the home he came from? Okay. Um, was there any other kids up at Jody's house? I have two sisters. Two sisters, anybody else? No, how old are your sisters? Uh, yeah, this is the 30th of, uh, or excuse me, the 
29th of August. It'll be the 30th of August. It's 10 and 14, and they're they're still at this house. Uh, um, it, it, are they tied up as well? Um, what's the deal with your sisters? Or are, are they um, are, are they being held? Are they are they do they have wounds on them as well? Nothing bad going on with them. Okay. Okay, so they're they're able to walk around the house and everything. And, well, okay, he says everything's fine with them. Grain of salt. Okay. He says he uh, what's happened to him is his fault. This 911 call led to both Jody Hildebrand and Ruby Frankie's arrests. Perfect. We're also hearing from Ruby Frankie herself just one day after her arrest. This is a call from and paid for by Ruby Frankie, Purgatory Correctional An inmate at Purgatory Correctional Facility. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. If you don't wish to talk, hang up now. After less than 24 hours in jail, Ruby makes a call to her husband, Kevin, who reminds her the call is being recorded. Okay, well, you know that this phone call is being recorded. Yes, that will come out. That will come out. Almost right away, Ruby asks whether she's making the headlines. Are we in the news? It sounds like it, at least you're in the news. I don't know about me. I don't know what he's talking about. But. In early conversations with Kevin, Ruby calls her arrest a witch hunt. I'm wondering if they went to Sherry to like ask her questions. I don't know. He's looking for public. I, I know they are. And a couple of months ago, Business Insider was reaching out to me, and I ignored their email. But um, I'm going dark. This is a witch. I'm not at BYU. I'm not at BYU anymore, so I don't know how they're going to find me. Yeah, maybe it was a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> I. I Now, that was the first phone call to my your husband. After he found out what had happened to his kid children, I've been going, why? Why did you do this? Why did you hurt and harm our children like you did? Why did you cause those wounds on them like you did? But it's nothing. At first, Frankie doesn't show any remorse, saying children can be full of evil. Adults have a really hard time understanding that children can be full of evil and what that takes to fight it. You've oh, and you know where they get that evil from? Their parents. See what it takes to fight evil. It's not the person you're fighting. And it can look like something it's not. And you've been there, you know that. And so I don't know any adults who are going to see the truth. So <coughs> I'm calm about this and I just... <coughs> the next day, Ruby speaks with Kevin again and even defends Jody Hildebrandt. The most upsetting thing is that I am completely misunderstood. That is the most horrible feeling. Like my own family misunderstands me, they misinterpret me and... and Poor Jody, they, they misinterpret her, they misunderstand her. She puts her neck out on the line for people and then they get mad at her. I mean, it's just horrendous. It's horrendous. Ruby seems to realize the legal implications ahead, but still blames the entire situation on Satan. It's 35 years in this and he said, even if you are acquitted and um, are released, they will place legal restrictions on your access to the under 18 children. I figured such. I figured such. God told me. God told me when I was driving before I called you. I didn't have any information. I didn't know anything. And the Spirit said, your children are going to be removed. And I just, I cried out loud. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not ready. 
ngậm chưa nhỉ ngậm ra gì ngậm ra gì chưa à gì xong chị trời anh nói god this woman so Satan has taken everything away from me that I love. You love your children. I'm a children. good woman. I don't do naughty that. things. I don't do naughty things. I'm a really good girl. But the yeah. next time we hear from Ruby in late October, she's changed her tune. <clears throat> I can't say everything that I want to say, but um, I really did feel it. I really did feel like being arrested, like a rescue. I like could just felt so many angels around and it was like a really, it was really kind of surreal, kind of strange. Um, but I, I just I don't know if it's or not, but that might have been and he's given a lot of God, I saw this life for years and I'm just so grateful so, how many people you know the go to the grave not, not having woken up and I just I want to use this time and I am using this time to to change it, to repent and to do what I can to let the Lord know I I love him and my family. And, uh, <clears throat> I've had many experiences here to kind of guide my thinking. A month later, Ruby says time away from Jody has cleared her head. I could not come out of this without without his grace, without his mercy, without his help. This has been the strangest and the most miraculous intervention. It, it put everybody where they needed to be. It separated me from Jody, so I'm not hearing her. And I think just being gone and not hearing her has cleared a lot of things up for me. Ruby and Jody both pleaded guilty to all charges against them in December of last year. Ruby is caught on a recording discussing the pleas and future court proceedings. Did you did you see that Jody pled guilty today? I did see that. Yes, is that a relief for you? Mhm. Mm yeah, it's a big relief. It's a big relief. There, there would have been positive the other way too had she not pled guilty. There's enough evidence that she would have been could have been convicted for life, but um, that would have been messy. It would have been really messy, and the kids would have. So, um, so do you and her get the same outcome no matter what now, or is there a chance that it would be different? That's a that's a really good question. That's one that I've asked Lamar. Um, no, we can still have different outcomes. Ruby theorizes that Jody pleaded guilty because she knew Ruby would testify against her and expected Jody would lie about her mental health history. She can lie on her paperwork and she probably will. I don't think she's going to give them her history. But I think in the interview it's going to be apparent that she's mentally ill. Um, and so that will affect how long someone, you know, because they're looking, how, how repentant are you? How much responsibility are you taking? How, how are you aware that what you've done is wrong? And she's not, she's, the only reason she pled is because she didn't want to do life, knew I would testify. Then Ruby reveals the last time she spoke to Jody was the day of her arrest. When was the last thing you talked to her? Was it that day? Mm -hmm. It was when we were arrested. Yeah, I went, I left early in the morning to go to a dentist appointment with Julie. He left at like three in the morning. 
and she called me sometime in the morning and I and so I went back down but when I got to the house I mean it it looked like it looked like the movies there was a red fire truck there, there was a black van with tinted wind two ambulance there were 20 cop cars I mean it was it was did you just sit in your car no I I pulled up and found a spot to park she lives on a cul-de-sac I parked in the cul-de-sac and I walked up and the the driveway was just full of cops and I just walked up to the cops and he said they said are you the mother and I nodded my head and so they took me in and put me in the casita and I sat there for a couple hours I just sat there Ruby then explains that with time she got a clearer picture of what really happened but Ruby Frankie's jailhouse calls aren't the only ones we're hearing. As long crimes Elizabeth Milner explains, we also hear from Jody Hildebrandt. In the newly released jail phone calls, Ruby Frankie's former business partner, Jody Hildebrandt, is showing no remorse for the abuse inflicted upon Frankie's children. But it was like everything got taken out of the house and it's in the storage unit so that I could come to jail. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but it, it really feels that way. And I don't know if I'm going to be like some kind of example, but when I get out of here, I have a story to tell and I am I'm going to try to do everything I can to protect the children because that's what's happening is that kids are being just horribly abused. And, and instead of the kids, anyways, it's, it's a story that when you come up with that. So what I'm saying is you're being crucified in public opinion. So your fear has to be super prepared and the only way he's going to get prepared is if you push him and ride him okay i will i'll call him today he doesn't seem really animated he seems like you know the pictures the pictures are going to destroy you and i'm like we didn't do that we didn't do that those pictures we did not do he did that to well, himself yes did we put that oh, on yeah. him and then he rubbed around and cut himself yes but we didn't do that Oh, so you didn't tie him up with rope and chain, and then because of the sores on his arm and his leg, you didn't put cage on pepper and honey on it. You didn't wrap it in cling film and then put tape around it. Wrong. I could see a little boy doing that. I really can. Not. This woman is just getting me so mad. In a later phone call, Hildebrandt can be heard visibly emotional, but still defending her actions. I marry you, Dennis. Nobody wants the truth. Nobody wants the truth. Nobody wants the truth because these kids, you know, I told Doug, I woke up, the spirit told me, it's all the devil. I mean, you've seen him. I mean, I've known you, what, for five years, you've watched him come at me, come at me, come at me, come at me. And you're exactly right because he knows I know what he's doing. And he uses these kids, and he uses all of us as the adults, the parents that don't hold the kids accountable. So now it's it's abusive to make a kid sleep on the floor. It's abusive, or it's abusive. Yes, it is abusive. You know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You can't even raise your kids anymore. In a February recorded call after Hildebrandt pleaded guilty, she refers to Bible scripture while leaving a coded message to a man she's speaking with on the phone. So there's a section he's talking about, um, talking about the second coming. And, you know, I'm coming from this place of, I was just getting ready to move and all of a sudden I ended up in prison. You know, like, what, what the world? And, um, you know, one day you'll know all the details and it'll, it'll all make sense, but... I could talk in code here. Um, so he said, um, this is the Lord talking to the disciples. They asked him, like, um, when shall these things be? Like, when, when are these things to come to pass? And so he starts talking to him about the last days. And he, he says, 
that nation shall war against nation, and that kingdom against kingdom. But and then he goes, but before all the, these that he just talked about, they shall lay their hands on you. Now, I have been praying for five months, like, explain this to me, like, what is going on? Like, I'm willing to go there, but please let me go right side up. Like, like if you want me to be there because you want me to be there, then, then great, great. I will not resist it at all, but please help me understand. So I read this this morning, and I just wept and wept and just thanked him and thanked him and thanked him because it just all click, 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 click. He says, but before all these things, you know, nation rising against nation, they show their hands on you. And I'm like, <laughs> and prosecute you. And at one point, when she said she's happy to go to prison. And he says, and ye shall be betrayed by both parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends. I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's exactly what's going on. And some of you shall be caused to be put to death. And you shall be hated for, by all men for my name's sake. And then he goes on to say, you know, and I never read that before, but like I've never been in prison. But I just read that. And I just wept. I mean, the spirit was like, he just said, this is you. So then I read, I read in Mark, that was in, that was in um, Luke. And I read in Mark the same kind of thing, you know, because the, the Gospels, they, they wrote, Similarly, um, so he said, now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, like the father will betray the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Hold on. All right. Parents to death, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. I just that is one sick woman and I hope she just did the full penalty I hope she does the 30 years because that's the most they can do is 30 years not 60 right well, because in their state the law is unless it's murder the most it can do is 30. Which I think is disgusting. If you're charged, got four charges, and each charge is up to 15 years, one to 15 years, you should do the 60 years. What's the point of having no charges if you're not going to penalise them to the fullest? You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense to me. So... Anyway, uh, I wanted to show you something, right? Come on. Oh. Right, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's get rid of this me. Let's get rid of this me. Right. Now I'm putting it out there again because there are some pictures that you will see that are very disturbing. Okay? So this is the mother. Oh look at her. Look at her eyes. Right. Now here are two pictures. What are these can scratch his ear, I'd say I from you know when look at him. Oh, oh but it's like one of them people from the concentration camps. But all these scratches, like I heard at one day, she used to make the daughter jump into the uh, cactus plants at the garden. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if that's what all the scratches are from. You know what I mean? Making a jump into cactus plants? 
any mark. These are some of the pictures when they load up. Now, as I said, some are very triggering, like this one and even this one. But they have got the wound, every any damage blurred out. Right? Look at him. That is disgusting. The wounds on his legs. Look at that happy family. Yeah, because you was raking in the money then, weren't you, love? This is the video, which I'll play. But we have already seen this, but this is... Look at him. Look at that lad. Answer the door right now, but if you'd like to leave a message, you can do it now. Sergeant told me I'm going to just get a few pictures of your favorite Right. So that's that. This was the, uh, where she just sat there staring, blinking quite quickly and not saying anything. But apparently, Jody says he's done this to himself. See what I mean by all these marks? I think this is where his daughter, this is, because she's got jeans on, right? Where she was made to jump into cactus plants, into the cactuses. Right, they're giving him nuts there because that's nutrition. Right? But come on, look at this. You can see where someone's been around their foot. You know what I mean? This was the EMT. EMS on me. Trying to talk to the little girl to get her to come out. You know what I mean? Four hours it took them to get that little girl to come out of that cupboard. This is the uh, safe room. Look at that flipping door. Right? Inside is a pull-up, pull-down bed that actually goes up into something, into the wall. Yeah, it's got this quite big room. 
sit down here. Right, what the hell are those two in the washing machine and whatever sitting right in the middle for? There's some rope. Trigger warning, I'm telling you. And they made them wear adult diapers. Adult diapers. There's that skin and bone, they literally fall off them. And look at this. Cupboard full of food. Cupboard. Food, full of food and they never gave them kids that food this is the studio where they did their recordings right all their videos this is outside the house james's house she's saying look this is a little girl and at one time she was here but then near the end she moved further back she moved further up here but they did think because of her short hair, it was a little boy they was looking at. Evil. Right? Evil. And I hope to God, just because she pleaded, I'm so sorry for my children, I'm so sorry for my family, I'm thankful for the nurses and the doctors and all those people that help my children. Uh, they wouldn't have had to help your children. If you do your job as a mother and took your children away from that woman, you know what I mean? If the father had stood up, stood up in the first place and said, Excuse me, I'm not going to sleep in this different room. This is my house. I pay the mortgage on it. This is, if I will sleep with my wife in our bed, and if you don't like it, you're the guest, there's the door. Walk out now. And that's what he should have done. There's nothing wrong with their marriage. Apart from, it's just a red blooded male. He wanted to, some affection with his wife and his wife wouldn't give it him. So he turned to uh, videos and things like that. Pornographic videos. Well, I'm sorry, but... I think any red-blooded man is going to do that when the wife is saying, no, nope, don't come near me. Or they're going to go and find it somewhere else. She wants to be grateful he didn't go out and find it from somewhere else. You know what I mean? And it was just pictures or videos he was watching. So I think it's all disgusting, a whole lot of it. Right? So, I'm just glad they got what they got with justice. I hope this is going to take years for these children, right? Years to get over, to find the trust again in their parents, because they probably feel like the father abandoned them. You know what I mean? The father abandoned his children just because his, his wife said, I'm asking you to leave the house so that we can sort our marriage out. Hmm. Yeah, well, he should have said, no, I'm not leaving this house. This is my house. I pay the mortgage on it. You leave. And he should have stayed at home with the children. Those children were being left on their own for days in that house once the father left because they even had the police go round once and the police saw these children in the house on the road. But the children were told, do not answer the door to no one. No one. So they wouldn't. And so because they wouldn't answer the door, the police just walked away. Are you kidding me? You've got children, young children, in a house on the road. Uh, the, daughter, the eldest daughter has told you that they've been there for a few days on their own. Because the neighbours have told her, and you, the police, walk away. Because apparently there's a there's a law or something where you can leave your children in this state. There is a law, and you can leave your children unattended. You know what I mean? I think that law is needs to be removed. I don't think any child under the age of sixteen, at least sixteen 
to be left at home for days on end. I mean, no way should they be in that house on the run. And the police should not have left that house. They could have called in someone else. You know what I mean? We've got two children in this house. There's no adults about. You can't get them to open the door. You really need to make sure everything's okay. And they should have got in that house somehow. Found the father. I'm sure he would have had a key. You know what I mean? All the all the eldest daughter perhaps they could have gotten to Trevor again and said, Look, you've got a key for the house so we you can you can get in and check on these children. But to walk away and leave those children in that house knowing they was in there on their own. Because it was after that incident the neighbor said that uh the mother right or someone had put paper up at the windows so no one could see in. Now that's a red flag to me from not nothing else. Right? I remember our mum when she was decorating so the living room. She used to put windowing all over her windows, like when she took the curtains down. Right? She put window windowing all over the windows. So that no one could see and see what was going on. But once she finished decorating, which wasn't long, it took her about a day. She'd clean all her windows down. And put uh, the curtains back up again. Right? I can understand putting paper up to do decorating, maybe. But I'm not on a long term basis. But I think the police were at fault there. There really was as well. This could have come to a much happier ending without these children coming to the harm that did. And the fact that he wanted to press charges, the father did, on the eldest daughter because she took some electronics out of the house. But the house wasn't secure. So she took him out of the house to, be, to keep him secure. She wasn't stealing him. But oh no, he wanted to press charges against his eldest daughter. And yet he still wanted custody of his, his ever four children. That's looking good on you, mate. I don't know what's happening with the children. I don't know if they've been given to the father or not. I really don't know. So that is only to, that is time to be seen. Time will tell. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. There are more videos out there much more videos but i just wanted to show you the main ones like where they went in their home uh arrested her uh, literally grabbed them bulged her out the door yes how they arrested her how they took the mother out and put her in the police car right so i'm sorry for anything on there was triggering but to see it for your own eyes and I'm sorry if this judge lets them off and gives them an easy sentence after what we are seeing on YouTube and what we are hearing now on YouTube would be a disgrace. Would be, well, it won't be the judge, it'll be the parole board or whoever. So whoever gives, if they let them have an easy sentence, I would be disgusted. And I'll be back to discuss that when that time comes. So when that time comes in, what, about five months now? January? Is it January or February? So it's January, February, March. I think there's about three months to go before they go up in front of the parole board or whatever for the, to find out what sentence they will get. Whether they get the 15 years for each one or well, 30 years all in all, or one year for each charge. But those phone calls and just seeing the pictures and hearing that, and seeing the video of the little boy going house to house, it was heartbreaking. 
And I don't think four years is long enough. So the parable give that mother four years, I'll be disgusted. Well and truly disgusted. Anyway, I'd just like to say, this was an afternoon one. So for anyone watching on replay, please give this a like and share it. Share it. Get this out there. And leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. Right? Because I'm done. There's something here I'm going to go through with the father. I didn't go through the comments, did I? What I said about the father. Right. Here's a good one. Here's another one. This is where they raid Ruby's house in Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. We just got to see these videos. They are so. Ooh. It is silent because they haven't got the, the they've got the cameras on, but not they kept it silent. See the door, and they used to keep the kids behind in that behind that door. Why do you need a room like that? Please tell me. Right. I think there's a microwave in there. There's a fridge freezer. I believe there's a microwave in there. So it's a room where you could go and lock yourself into if anything was happening in your home. Right? Now they're trying to find out if there's any more spaces behind the units and what that. Yeah, there's a microwave there. So there's a it's a room where you could go and lock yourself in. And if you've got all the food in there, like your fridge stuff and your freezer stuff and your cupboard stuff, you could cook in there by using a microwave. So you'd have to have uh, frozen meals and microwave meals, I should say. Because there's no cooker. There is a microwave, a fridge freezer. So they're trying to look behind. There's nothing behind there. Wish my fridge freezer moved that easy. It's got the toilet there. Got a bed here. So it's all self-sufficient if you need to lock yourself in for whatever reason. Now, I don't know if you're seeing it then, but in that one drawer they opened. You'll see it in a minute, they'll bag it up. 
you know, look at that. Handcuffs, chains, and rope. That's what that little lad and that girl was put through. Um. And now what annoys me, they brought her in and let her sit inside in this hall, right? Because it's so hot out there. I wouldn't, I would make her sit outside in the sleeping sun. You know what I mean? So black, there's a picture there on the wall. Right? And so some things here on the wall. But everyone's so blank, there's nothing. Okay. Great. Right, there's nothing there. We're from that looks like the kitchen from, area. From where? Oh Utah County. Okay, so she's gonna be a few hours. That's it, she just sat there doing nothing. Uh, I just still want to find that interview with the father. Because I want to look at the comments. Oh, that was when they went to Pam Butcher's house. Right, what is that interview with the father about? I forgot to look at the comments, what they're saying. I like to see what people say, you see. You just sit there. So. Right, we'll put it on pause. Because we don't want to watch it again, we've already watched it. I just want to go through some of the comments. One, that was long crime. Right, one of the coming from he says he wishes he had a better he says he wishes he was a better husband but never says he wishes he had been a better father yeah just remember this man was going to press charges against his daughter after everything happened because she had taken a laptop from the home he's a dirt bag just like frank yeah yeah if you're not begging and crying to see your child immediately i think that would be uh, something is amiss. I know he's just been told what had happened to his son and his daughter. And then he sits there and goes, I love my wife. I trust my wife. After hearing what that, you know what I mean? And that's the reason he's only getting a divorce is so that he'll get custody of the children. So she invited me to leave the home. Most Mormon wives say, get out. Get out of her. You know what I mean? Well, she invited you. Well, you didn't have to take the invite up. You could say, no, I don't want that invitation. I'm staying where I am. How did you discipline your children, kids when you lived in the home? Kevin, I'm not comfortable answering that. Tells me all I need to know. Exactly. I do not understand why this poor excuse for a father is not being prosecuted. Because what is they're going on what happened at the house, at Joe's house, not what happened when he lived with us. Right. What's going to happen with my wife? I love my wife. Exactly, not a word about his kids. That is so annoying. Don't let this POS fool anyone. I've been screaming about this.
family for like six or seven years. And Kevin is not innocent. Yes, the abuse obviously got worse once Ruby got in with Jodie. But make no mistake, both Ruby and Kevin used starvation as punishment for many years. Oh yeah, we know that. When there's one video of the young boy at their house and uh, he, he said, can I have some breakfast? And he, she sat there and said, you don't need breakfast. But I do. No, you don't. And then when the elder brother and the lad is just roughing it on the floor, play, play, playing about on the floor, said, if you don't pack it in, you won't get your dinner tonight. They used, the, they used that tactic of taking the food away from their kids as a punishment. When the daughter didn't take the school lunch to school because she forgot to pick it up. Well, she'll just have to go hungry. Right, it says here. He was there when beds were taken from them for months, yes. He was there when Shag was sent to a labour camp for rebellious kids, yes. He echoed the same words about the children living in distortion and needing to save their souls from evil, yes. He needs to be charged too. He's shown his true colours even since the rest by threatening legal action against his own children. I hope and pray the investigation is still ongoing and we will be arrested soon. I also hope they investigate Ruby's siblings and parents as well because her sisters used to join her in the parents and videos on Facebook. Mmm. Saying the same damn thing. Yeah, yeah. What kind of father just leaves and never once checks up on his kids? He needs to be accountable and he certainly doesn't deserve the kids at all. He shouldn't get the kids. He abandoned them. His lack of outrage is an outrage. <laughs> I'm not comfortable, comfortable, given my address right now. I'm not comfortable with this and that. Bro, your children you just found bound, beaten and starved. WTF is wrong with you. Kevin was right next to Ruby for years watching all her abuse. He belongs in jail right next to his wife. He does. The father should be invited to prison. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is documented he loved humiliating his kids. Laughed at them when they fell. When they fell. Laughed when their mother punished them. He is as sick as the two in jail. Yes. It's so creepy to see how cold he is. It doesn't seem mentally normal. Something is wrong with this guy. It was perfectly fine abandoning those kids. There's no way he deserves custody now. No. Asks about his crazy wife. But not as traumatised kids. It's just as guilty. Exactly. I love my wife. What's going to happen to my wife? Sod your wife. What about your children? In 40 minutes in, and he still hasn't asked about his children. I repeat. Exactly. There's no connection to his children. He's more concerned with Ruby. The entire situation from legal standpoint and frustrated. He spent the last year getting sober in getting sober in order to return to his family. Now he can't. Oh, what a shame. His concerns are not about not for his children well being, but more about the life he had, he and Ruby created. It's true. He should be charged with neglect. He should. He didn't even visit it with the two older children after they left us. You no, know, because he cut them all off. He, he blocked the phone numbers. He couldn't email them because he blocked them, blocked it all. This guy participated in the abuse, the abuse together with Ruby and afterwards abandoned those kids for a whole year. Lock him up. 16 minutes, he starts accusing his son. Yep.
The fact that all the adults are being crazy and refusing to provide Refusing to provide information is sickening. You should care more about the kids than the people who abuse them. I'm still not having custody back after any of my kids. Hmm, he, still not having custody back of any of his kids, tells us everything we need to know. Clearly, he's unfit. He's, he's got the same, same mindset as his wife. This MF needs locked up too. If he had any interest in his own children, he knew what was going on. Exactly. He abandoned his children to it because he trusted his wife. I trusted my husband, but how would I abandon when they're babies, little ones like that? He's poor, he cries for, for his grief over the loss of his family. He cries over his love for a road movie. He does not quote over the abuse his children experience. He quotes for his wife, visibly shaking, but the news that his children was found rope burned, covered in duct tape, emaciated and begging for help from a neighbour. Zero reaction. So, what does emaciated mean? Uh, you're a professor or some Teacher in a university, are you not? You should know what that means. Do I condone this but that behaviour? The repeating of the questions blew up my mind. Well, no, I'll tell you what he's doing. It was paraphrasing. They just they ask him a question, so he repeats it back. So say they said, um, did you know your wife was staying at Jody's house? He just goes, did you know that my wife was staying at Jody's house? So then he opens it up again for them to say, yes. Did you we know she was staying at Jody's house with the children? You know what I mean? It's, it, I know about, oh no, I've done it myself. It's paraphrasing so that they open up a bit more, right, about the case. His wife almost killed his children and he's comfortable answering que answering questions. And he's not comfortable answering questions. Wow. Ruby invited me to leave the house. This spineless POS could have put a stop to her a long time ago. He could have taken her to court and demanded to stay in contact with his children. But he slunk away from her like a coward because it was easier and his children suffered. Father of the year. Exactly. This guy is gullible. His wife talks him into moving out, not, not contacting the kids, paying the bills, signing over the cars to her and telling him to work on his issues with empty promises of him going back to his family. Dude still wears his wedding ring. Ruby is a con artist and his, his actions are very weird and pathetic. He's aware she didn't start behaving like that overnight. No, she had us to Yes, right. She was her punishments were cruel, I think. But I think when she got in with Jody, it was Jody who escalated it to the next level. Because Jody's niece even said what she'd done to her. How she kept her tied up and wouldn't feed her and would make her run up and down these mountains in the hot summer in the hot sun so this wasn't new for Jodie so she escalated it up to the next level my concern is that Ruby was ignored by ignored despite many complaints don't make the same mistake with this so-called father who was part of the abuse no human being should be treated like that that's my thoughts we might differ on that Dude was letting you know exactly what you thought right there. Yeah. How is it how isn't he more concerned about the condition of his children? This is so telling to me. Yeah. And as I keep saying, the only reason he went for the divorce was because there's no way he's gonna get the children back while he's married to her. No way. And I don't think he should get the children back. 
I hope they are in foster care and I hope they are in good foster care because you do get these foster carers that are bad so I hope they're not in the same situation again you know what I mean it's just sickening and he had more concern for his wife than his children as I said if that had been me and I just they just told me that my wife had both been in the and my wife had been arrested because they found their 12 year old son in Macy Mountain, Macy Mountain, Macy 80, Macy 80, sores, cuts, and everything else on his body. I'll be going, what? What? My wife did that? Right. Fucking throw the book at the beach. Fucking throw the book at her. You know what I mean? My kids are my world, and I will never let anyone hurt my children. No one hurts my children. Throw the book at her. What are you digging? But I love my wife. What's going to happen to my wife? I love my wife. I trust my wife. So, really, by saying you trust your wife, you say you agree with what she done. You agree with everything she done to those two poor children. And the other daughter was at that house as well. What well, that she's been abused, but the two younger ones were. The third one was just probably being used as a slave to clean the house. Because we all know how they like their children to clean their houses for them. Disgusting. Anyway, I've been on here three hours now. And I've got to go. I've got to go. So I'm going to say thank you for being here with me. If you're watching on Catch Up, leave me a comment. I will get back to them. Let me know your opinions on all this. Because as I said, I followed this case from day one. Right, there is a video on YouTube. I've done first about this. Right, and um, I'll put the link into this description so you can watch that if you're watching on replay. So please take care, hug your children, hug those children tight. If you see something, say something. Good night. Oh, my God.